everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. If you're new here, I make simple and delicious vegan recipes. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out links for all my other social channels down below. Today, we are talking all about fall salads. I was just pondering, you know, the existence of life and things the other day. And I came to the realization that I honestly think fall salads are better than any other season. Yeah, even spring and summer. Do you know why? Because it's easy to make them filling and hearty. So we're not talking any sad, like limp iceberg lettuce salads here. If you know me, you know I know how to make a pretty good salad. So all these salads are one, packed with fall produce. Two, they're cozy, hearty, and nutritionally balanced. So you can easily have them for a meal or a wholesome side next to a main. I guess that's what sides are for. And uh, three, I don't know, we've got some variety here, okay? We've got some with kale, we've got some with greens, we've got some with grains. There's a little something for everyone. So let's just get right into the recipes. First up, we're going to be making a curried cauliflower lentil salad. Fun fact, cauliflower is actually in season in early fall. And this recipe is perfect for meal prep or an easy dinner like everything else, but it's high in protein because of lentils. So I'm using French lentils here. They're a little bit firmer than the brown lentils you might find regularly at a store, which is why I like them for the salad. So we're adding some salt and garlic powder to our pot, sort of mixing it in. And then we're just going to add some water to our our lentils and then cook this bring it to a boil and cook it until the lentils are tender in the meantime we're also going to be roasting our cauliflower so I cut up some cauliflower into florets and we're putting avocado oil and some warming spices on it so we've got garlic powder smoked paprika and curry powder just mix this up until the cauliflower is nice and evenly coated and then while our lentils cook we can also go ahead and pop this onto a lined baking tray and bake it in the oven until it's nice and crispy be. Now let's work on our vinaigrette. This is a very simple vinaigrette. Actually, all of the recipes are pretty similar for the salad dressings. I guess I have a theme, but we're using some apple cider vinegar, olive oil, Dijon mustard, and some curry powder. You can whisk it all up until it's emulsified, or as you can see later, I also just like to put everything in a jar and shake it up if you want something that's, I don't know, I feel like it's a little more messy. Not more messy, less messy. Anyways, look at this beautiful cauliflower. It's nice and golden. So now it's time to assemble our salad. So it's obviously not just lentils and cauliflower, but we're going to start by putting our lentils in a large bowl. My first bowl wasn't big enough. And then we're going to add in some roasted cauliflower along with some shredded carrots, some pickled red onions, and some freshly chopped cilantro. Then just pour the dressing on top and mix everything together. I love the salad because you have a lot of different textures and flavors and the pickled red onions add a nice like freshness where the lentils are nice and hearty and the carrots add some sweetness and a little bit of a crunch too. This recipe holds up really well in the fridge as well because nothing in it is really going to get super soggy. Next up, we're making a kale, apple, and walnut salad. The salad could easily be a lunch if you added some protein to it, like some tofu or some beans, but I also think it's a great side salad or a thing to bring for a party. So we're going to start out by making our dressing. We're combining some olive oil, apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, and Dijon mustard, plus a little bit of salt and garlic. I love garlic. And fun fact, the acidity from the vinegar actually neutralizes that like raw garlic flavor. So by making this first, we can shake it up and set it aside and it'll sort of give the garlic time to mellow out. But if you're not a garlic fan, you could also leave it out too. Now the key to kale salad, which I'm sure you've heard before, is to massage your kale in the dressing. This helps break down the coarse fiber in the kale salad or in the kale leaves itself. It makes it easier to digest and chew and it makes it a little bit less bitter too. So you're going to massage the kale until it's nice and tender and has reduced in size like you can see here. And then we'll go ahead and add our remaining ingredients. We've got some parsley for some freshness, some apple for sweetness and crunch, and some walnuts for crunch and a nice buttery flavor too. I like to add some black pepper and then you're just going to top it off with the remaining of the dressing and toss to combine. I would let this sit for a few minutes just so the apples and the walnuts absorb some of the dressing flavor. But actually this will last really great in the fridge too because the kale is already massaged so it's not really going to wilt anymore and everything else is gonna stay pretty crunchy as well. So I really like this one. I think you should give it a shot. Next up, we've got some roasted butternut squash salad. I love butternut squash. 
Honestly, I like it more than pumpkin and it's in season in the fall and winter and pretty budget friendly too. So we're going to start out by roasting some veggies. I'm roasting some butternut squash with some shallots plus some rosemary. And we're also going to season it generously with salt and black pepper. And then just drizzle some olive oil over the top and mix everything up until it's all nice and coated. The shallots are gonna become like crispy and almost jammy in the oven while they bake with the butternut squash. It's pretty great. And then we're making our dressing again. It's oil, vinegar, maple syrup, Dijon mustard, salt, pepper, and garlic. What can I say? I'm pretty sure the recipe for the dressings, the rest of these salads are all the same, but what can I say? I've said that like three times already, so I am saying it, but you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're adding it to a jar, shaking it up. You guys know the drill. And then it's time to assemble. So here I have some mixed greens. I actually like to use a combination of fresh greens and arugula. I feel like the arugula adds a nice tang, but the sort of salad green mix mellows it out a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and add our butternut squash and shallots to the bowl. And then I'm also adding some chickpeas for some protein. Here I added some rosemary garlic pecans. I have the full recipe for these on my blog. They are addictingly delicious, um, but you can also just use regular pecans as well. And then we're also going to add some vegan feta cheese. This is technically optional, but I like the saltiness and creaminess that the feta brings to the salad. So I would highly recommend it if you can get your hands on it. I use the Follow Your Heart brand, but Trader Joe's also has one that's pretty good. So then you're just going to toss everything and enjoy. This already is very well balanced. You've got some complex carbs, some healthy fats, some protein from the chickpeas. So I think this is a great light lunch, but again, it's also a great side dish for the cozier months. Next up, we've got a fall farro salad with a maple Dijon vinaigrette. This, I imagine, is like a beautiful side dish for Thanksgiving if you want something a little untraditional, but it's also great for, you know, dinners or even meal prep as well. So we're going to be roasting some butternut squash again. This time we're doing it with some rosemary, salt, and pepper, but along with our oil, we're also going to add some maple syrup. This is going to help the butternut squash caramelize a little bit more in the oven and get sort of more crispy golden edges. So you're going to drizzle everything on and then I like to just mix everything with my hands. I find that that's the easiest way for everything to be nice and coated. And I'm doing this on a small baking sheet because we're also going to be roasting some shaved Brussels sprouts and shallots together. These are sliced more thinly so they'll get a little bit more crispy and add a nice textural element. And we're seasoning these with some fresh thyme and then again, salt, pepper, and olive oil. You can measure your olive oil out, but personally I just like to drizzle a little bit on there and then, you know, mix it all up with your hands, just like I did for the butternut squash. And then we're gonna pop this in the oven right next to the butternut squash, but this is only gonna bake for about 20 or so minutes. And then we'll remove it from the oven and the butternut squash will go in for a few minutes longer. But while everything's roasting, we're going to make our dressing. Let's see if you can guess the ingredients. Hmm, let's see, we've got oil, apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, garlic, Dijon mustard, black pepper, and salt. You know, maybe you should just make a big batch of this dressing and just keep it on hand at all times because it's like the best maple Dijon vinaigrette. And I highly enjoy it. So now it's time to admire our roasted veggies. As you can see, the Brussels sprouts are nice and tender, but they do have some crispy edges. The butternut squash is golden around the edges and nice and tender as well. And then the other main hearty component of this recipe is some farro. I cooked mine ahead of time according to package instructions. You could obviously cook it while you're roasting your veggies as well. So now you're just going to combine all of your cooked elements into a large mixing bowl. I also love the salix. There's so many different like colors and textures as you'll see. So it's just really appealing to look at as well. And I'm kind of trying to spread it out evenly so I have less work to do later when I'm mixing everything together. And then for our additional toppings, we're adding some fresh parsley. I just love the fresh flavor it adds. And I'm adding some dried cherries. You could also use dried cranberries. Personally, I prefer cherries though. Then I'm also adding some pumpkin seeds to keep this nut free, but also add a little bit of a crunch. Then you're just going to pour your dressing on top. Like, look, look, look how beautiful this is. Can we just appreciate? I'm gonna season it with some salt and pepper as well. Actually, mostly pepper. You can add salt if you need to though and then just mix everything until it is well combined. I feel like this is almost like a stuffing because you have the farro, which is actually a pretty good source of protein too, um, but it's a great side salad or side dish. And you could serve this warm if you wanted to. And this I served it cold, but it's honestly fantastic either way. All right, friends, and there you have it. Leave a comment down below and tell me which one of these recipes you wanna make first. Honestly, I feel like every single one is pretty dang delicious and they're great for a variety of occasions too. I feel like they all look good enough where you could bring them to like a friendly gathering or maybe even like a Thanksgiving coming up in the near not so distant future or just, you know, get together with friends or a nicer week 
night dinner, but you could also easily meal prep them for lunch. Definitely don't forget to check out the blog post for each of these recipes. I have substitution notes, ways you can make these into a main, maybe by adding more plant-based protein, and all of my tips and tricks. So all those links will be down in the description below. And while you're there, you can check out my blog for other delicious plant-based recipes. So that's all from me for today. I hope you guys are well. Be sure to follow me on Instagram or TikTok if you want more sort of daily or more frequent uh, recipe content. But if you're happy with the YouTube upload frequency, you know, you can just stick around here as well. But anyways, thanks for watching. And I look forward to virtually seeing you soon. Bye.